Hello and welcome back to the book club, the club where we talk about books that have been recently read and enjoying. Let me know what you've been recently reading and enjoying, and if you've read what I'm about to talk about, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. A Court of Thorns and Roses has been on my radar for a quick minute. It's an absolutely humongous book series on TikTok. It is just, I see so much about it, I've heard so much about it, and I was genuinely interested to give it a go myself. It didn't necessarily seem like something that was directly up my normal alley, but I was ready to give it a go, and honestly, I was so gripped by this book in a way that I almost didn't want to be, but I, I, I so very much was. I enjoyed every minute of reading of this. We'll get into it a little bit. The, 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 the sort of first half's a little bit slow, but the last sort of hundred pages I got through in maybe a day and a half because this book is just brilliant. It's such a brilliant entry level fantasy book. I've really wanted to get into some sort of reading more deeper fantasy. I've bought The Way of the Kings and the Brendan Sanderson books. I, I've not yet read them they're on my side they were ready to read but i wanted something a little bit lighter and so a sort of romance fantasy that is a story that is told in such a simple way while you're also conveying everything that you need to where it's not sort of dulled down to the point of having no depth and context this 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 book is absolutely it i'm really excited to read the second book in the trilogy i've i've got the whole collection so i'm genuinely excited to see what happens with Feyre, what happens with all the courts how how things develop now that you know they're they're free of amarantha's hold on the on the on the world um, i'm genuinely excited to see just what happens in this series so if you don't know what a court of thorns and roses is it's essentially a fantasy romance book we start with Feyre, who is on the human side of the country. She is in this tiny little village, just a rundown house, no money, and has to hunt. Through hunting, she kills what is, well, it turns out to be a fairy. These fairies are not the typical dancing around, flappy wings fairies, although some do have wings. No, it is like a wolf and another fairy comes to take her away because she killed that fairy and she has to go to their land. From then on, it's sort of a retelling of Beauty and the Beast in a way I find. It's a girl who is trapped in a, in a massive mansion and house and hates the owner who is just this brute strength of Tamlin. He, he is just this, this old powerful guy, this high fae and um, yeah, she doesn't like him. She doesn't like any of their kind. But over the course of the book and through different things, she slowly learns to like them and learns more about their world and, and why what's happening to them is happening to them and just everything like that. It's a brilliantly told story, a little bit slow at times at that beginning bit. I was sort of waiting for something more to kick off. And what came in sort of the last 100 to 150 pages, I genuinely did not expect to be that gripped. Like, I was enjoying the book up until that point, but after Feyre enters the under the mountain, that just entire thing from start to finish had me utterly gripped. Like I have never been gripped by a book like that before to just constantly want to be reading it and learn more and see what happens next. I don't genuinely couldn't tell you another book that has uh, gripped me like that. I, I'm, gen I'm, I'm relatively new to reading, so I'm trying to get into fantasy and that's why I picked this book because I thought this was a brilliant entry level fantasy book before I delve into something really, you know, convoluted and deep and just just massive grand worlds that you need to learn loads of names and stuff for so this was relatively simple it kept the world building down to the, the the bare bones of what it needed to it's a simple concept it's not extreme with with the words or the language it uses it's it's easy to read it's easy to grasp and understand and that's why i enjoyed it but the last 150 pages of just her trials and the realization that the house had been burned down of claire who she essentially sentenced to death and seeing the body up there that was just crazy. I've not started reading faster than the end of the trial, the third trial. Just that tension of the trial that builds up to her essentially being freed and that whole just fight sequence. Oh, it's it's just told in a way that just, like I say, it's easy to read. You, you get everything that's happening. It's, it's not overly done and 
that is why I enjoyed this book so much. There's not a whole lot of characters to keep track of, there's not a whole lot of uh, places and stuff that you need to remember. It's, it's simple and yet it still also has so many brilliant fantasy elements that it makes it just such an enjoyable book. And I'm genuinely now really excited, like I say, to read the next one in the series, but also just delve deeper into fantasy. I bought the Stormlight Archive and they are thick they are big books but I, i'm genuinely excited to to just start reading fantasy everything that i've read before was sort of uh real life stuff i read a lot of japanese literature which is just sort of real life uh day-to-day -day stories which i love and i still will always read but i think fantasy is is, is where i'm heading because i really enjoyed this book I went into A Court of Thorns and Roses thinking that it was this sort of Lord of the Rings but with a whole lot of sex in it. And to be honest, in the first book there's not a whole lot of anything. There's sexual tension and stuff like that, but for anybody who says that that is all this story is, is, is very wrong, I genuinely think. Like, this story is so enjoyable on many other levels other than just that stuff. Um, I've heard that it picks up a lot in the second and the third book, but for now I've enjoyed what I got in this without needing all that extra stuff. So yeah, genuinely give this book a go, not just for the romance and the sexual stuff, but just because it's it's a nice, it's a nice entry level fantasy book, I think. Uh, I don't wanna say an entry level fantasy book in a sort of bad way. I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean it in sort of like a, it, it's basic beyond belief. I just mean it's easy to read, it's easy to grasp, and it's just an enjoyable book to read. But anyway, let me know. What did you think of A Court of Thorns and Roses if you've read it? And I'll see you next time on the book club.